Hello and welcome to ATG 4950. One of the most important concepts when designing and developing a product is ethics and environmental issues. In this session, we will define ethics, then go over some of the product design, product quality, and processes, uh, ethical and environmental issues. Ethics, as defined by James Fazer, uh, which is or who is a professor in uh, of uh, philosophy at the University of Tennessee, uh, at uh, Martin, um, defined uh, uh, ethics uh, as a moral philosophy that involves uh, systemizing, defining, and recommending concepts of right and wrong behavior and that was back in 2003 ethics puts a huge responsibility on the shoulders of design engineers and operations managers uh, responsibility towards the society and uh, when designing a product, the engineers should think at the effect of that product on the environment for humans living in the future, for our kids, for our uh, future um, uh, relatives or uh, 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 other people that's living on the earth. The engineer should consider pollution, loss of wilderness, the uh, degradation of uh, ecosystems and climate change. It will be a challenge to develop a safe quality product at the same time maintaining a clean environment and providing a safe workplace. Engineers and managers should honor community commitments. The ethics of an operations manager is very important to deliver healthy, safe, quality products and services. Actually, operations manager that ignores work ethics will suffer the risk of injuries, lawsuits, recalls, and regulations. The wrong response to a problem might jeopardize the organization reputation. To create a product design that is ethical and environmentally friendly, we need to ask the following question. Is it possible to enhance productivity, drive down costs, and preserve resources? If we answer that question, though, an ethical or through an ethical uh, approach, um, then we need to uh, view uh, product design from a systems perspective and then consider the entire life cycle of the product and when we say view the product from uh, a system uh, perspective uh, then we are uh, talking about the different systems that will be associated with that one or that will interact with the product so that product is um, when designing it it, it is or when when it's ready or when uh, it's done it is actually interacting with the different systems in the environment around that product or around the person that's using that product based on that we should understand that effect on the environment on the different systems surrounding that product and the user and design our product based on that The goals for ethical and environmentally friendly designs are to develop safe and more environmentally sound products. Like we said, to uh, uh, at least you know acknowledge that there is systems, there are many systems interacting with that product and with the user, and based on that, be more friendly when developing that product and minimize the waste of raw material, uh, raw materials and energy when doing that then uh, of course we need to reduce the environmental liabilities 
In addition, we need to increase cost effectiveness of com uh, complying with environmental regulations. Although it might be um, uh, costly, but uh, you know, again, that will protect the environment and protect the organization from uh, many future uh, losses and problems. Uh, also, uh, it's good to be recognized as a company or as organization uh, as good corporate citizen. The guidelines for environmentally friendly designs, when we say that it's environmentally friendly, what do we mean by that? We mean that we would like to make the uh, product from a recyclable material. Um, so we uh, try to use recycled material uh, later on for other products or for the same product. Uh, we can use less harmful ingredients uh, that will not affect the environment or affect the uh, people. Uh, use lighter components, uh, use less energy, and of course use less material uh, so we don't consume the material that exists on earth uh, for the humans. <clears throat> Let's look at some of the legal and industry standards that uh, protects the humans and the environment. Uh, usually these um, uh, legal uh, issues or uh, standards uh, usually uh, can be on different phases, uh, can be on at the design uh, uh, stage or the manufacturing stage or phase, uh, and even on the consumption uh, phase. Uh, so we are going to look at the different phases and in this one it will be the legal and industry st standards just for the design. So for the design we need to look our product at, at the product that we are developing and see does it um, actually need standards and um, uh, regulations from the uh, Federal Drug Administration. Uh, is it related to them? And if it does, then we have to follow the instruction or the standards that they have. Uh, does it follow or uh, fall under the Consumer Products Safety Commission. If it does, then I have to follow the standards. The same for the National Highway Safety Administration or for the Children's uh, Product Safety Act. If we are dealing with any product that's for children, then we need to uh, comply with that uh, standard. For manufacture uh, or assembly, uh, there are other standards and uh, regulation uh, from other organizations such as the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, OSHA, uh, the Environmental Protection Agency, uh, the Professional uh, Ergonomic Standards, uh, state and local laws dealing with employment uh, standards and uh, discrimination. Uh, all these are um, included or um, uh, should be uh, uh, followed when uh, developing or uh, uh, manufacturing or assembling uh, a product. Not only for the design, uh, manufacturing and assembly, but also for the disassembly and disposal of the item, we need to consider the uh, different regulations and standards available, such as the Vehicle Recycling Partnership and the uh, increasingly rigid laws worldwide that actually affects the disposable uh, or the disposal of the different uh, uh, trash or item or uh, other related items uh, that might hurt the environment. Uh, hurt the environment. So we look at the different um, items that we have and if we are disposing of any harmful material, we have to consider that and uh, maybe contact the uh, local authorities or state authorities to know exactly how we can dispose uh, uh, these items. Um, for example, the car battery. Uh, the, uh, usually, if you change the tires or change the uh, car battery, 
um, they will uh, charge you extra money for disposal so they can uh, 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 dispose uh, those uh, items properly uh, after uh, you replace them but there are other items that you use at home such as the paint uh, and usually they have uh, different counties have different days uh, where they collect the paint and dispose it, uh, they actually um, uh, collect it for free or they open centers for collection for free uh, at certain days of the year where you can drop your cans of paint that you did not use or dry paint or other uh, paint that you you need to get rid of uh, again you know this is the proper disposal of uh, some of the items that might affect the uh, uh, environment promoting green earth um, lots of operations managers are uh, actually uh, promoting environmentally friendly processes uh, to reduce the negative impact on the nature uh, managers encourage recycling to reduce the waste of materials uh, which will increase the efficiency of resource utilization also some managers are promoting the use of less harmful ingredients in new products to minimize the effect uh, event after the disposal process lots of administrations or administration and manager or management promote energy savings through the reduction of energy use in their organizations and again all these uh, factors uh, will have uh, an impact on the environment Uh, that will be all for this session. If you have any questions, uh, you can email it um, uh, through Florida Online. Um, thank you and have a great day.